You have been admitted to the intensive care unit today. You were unwell at home and today you developed a rash all over your body. Because you are very seriously ill, at the moment we have given you medication to keep you asleep and we have put a tube in your mouth and throat and attached you to a ventilator to help you breathe. You are on a lot of antibiotics as we think you have menococcal septicemia. I'm Vivian Bell, I'm 62. I'm a quadruple amputee and I live at home with my husband. It was the beginning of May. It was a Monday, I actually went shopping. I had uh, an awful sore throat and bad headache. And at the time I thought, oh, I'm going down with flu. So, you know, midweek, Wednesday, didn't get any better. Thursday, very lethargic. And I actually had a wedding to do because I, I was a mobile hairdresser. And I knew I had to get better for Saturday went to work on the Friday morning and had to cancel half my shift and I thought I need to get to bed. 11 o'clock at night I woke up and I thought there's just something not right here and I got up to go to the loo and unfortunately my legs just wouldn't go. Then about two o'clock in the morning you know when you've got like a piece of blotting paper with an ink pen and it was just all up my arm across my chest and I thought, oh, this is not right, this. And I just dialed 999. The paramedics came. I did actually say to them, I'm sure I've got meningitis. I was rushed into South Tyneside Hospital. And I can remember going in the ambulance, blue lights, and all the doctors and nurses practically standing at the door. The only thing I do remember is them taking my jewellery off. Because you know what hairdressers are like and being induced into a, a coma for nine weeks. After I did come around, the doctors from day one, it said uh, I would have to lose my fingers and um, possibly my feet at that stage, uh, which was quite a shock. And then it was the 1st of November, they were going to remove my legs just below my knees. It wasn't easy, I had lots of mountains to climb, but you know, Eventually got home December the 24th, just in time for Christmas. I was in hospital about eight months. After coming home, obviously I had to come home with a hospital bed. I have my hoist in the bathroom. I got my chair that um, I don't like to use these days, but have to. I call it my little chariot. <laughs> and we just make the most of every day now. The girls do a lot of shopping for me and uh, all the family's always here on a weekend and everything because it's not just my life that's changed, it's all of their lives as well. So we, we try to make the best of every day. Going into uh, intensive care, everyone who is really poorly is allocated a nurse every day and uh, they also provide a diary for the family and the nurse so it was nice I knew what was happening when I read it back that uh, I was cared for and I think it told both myself and the family but it took me a long time to read it afterwards maybe two years before I could get through it but um, it was a comfort for both the family and myself that little diary. Hi ma'am this is my second visit today and I've come to say good night you look so peaceful tonight Today you tried to open your eyes. We got such a fright. I was talking to you, so maybe you did this for me to shut up. I've had a week from hell, but you're better now than you were last week. I'm missing you so much, I just want a cuddle. You've been so strong and I'm very proud of you. You're a fighter, so keep it up. Love you lots, Sarah and Craig. So, Mrs Bell, we've had some communication with you via the voice box. You haven't lost your sense of humour. You are very dry and a little mad, but you are fighting and getting stronger. You should see the amount of love that surrounds you. Tomorrow's another day. You know, you've got to get that mindset in your head to get on the right path because... It, there's so much, everything changes. It's nothing like uh, life was before. It's just completely different. was actually discharged from hospital last year, after five years, with all my operations completed. I take life at a slow pace now. I still like to do lots of things that I, I had, did do before, just at a slow pace, and I still get there. It's very frustrating, 
but I still enjoy life and I look forward to every day, which is a good thing.